All right. In this video, we are going to define the parts of a Mohr circle um, just to go back over the basic pieces uh, that define this diagram. So uh, this is the notes packet that I give to my students. If you're in my class, um, you should have one of these. So we have two axes. Um, this is our y-axis, which is also our shear stress axis. And this is our x-axis, which is going to be our normal stress axis. I'm going to switch pens. Okay. Shear stress, normal stress. Okay. I am going to give us a more diagram. So going over one of these, this is your uh, compass. It's the spiky thing. Pro protractor is the thing that looks like a little smiley face. You want to make sure that when you're using this, the pencil tip and the pointy tip are really close uh, together to be in the same distance. Um, if it's been a while since you've used one, I totally get it. Um, go ahead and let that width be just something that'll fit on your page. If you're not sure about it, a lot of these are going to be labeled right in between, either with angles or with inches. So that's the the radii of the circle. So I'm going to set this to being um, just over an inch in diameter or in radius. Okay. I twist my paper rather than uh, twisting my protractor. I feel like it's easier on my wrist that way. Okay, so just to think back to where the center of my circle was, I'm going to mark that. Okay. Now, let's talk about this circle and its radius and what the points on the actual circle are. So on the x-axis, we have stresses that don't have a shear stress associated with them. So just normal stresses. So for example, this point over here is some x comma a y of zero. There's no y associated with that point. And it's the biggest that that x value will ever get. So it's the biggest normal stress that can ever be applied um, to the rock, to, to the plane that we care about. Okay, so over here, I'm going to write the coordinates of this point as sigma 1, comma 0. Okay. Sometimes you'll see people just call it sigma 1. That's fine. But for this note set, I want to stress that that y, that the shear stress, is 0. Over here on the left, that's the smallest normal stress that I'm going to have um, on this Mohr diagram. And so that's going to be sigma 3 as my x value comma zero. There's no shear stress associated with that. And that's a really special part of what makes these principal stresses. Principal stresses are the normal stresses that get applied to the rock where there's no shear stresses associated with them. Okay, now that does not mean that the center of this circle is sigma 2. Sigma 2 can be anywhere between sigma 3 and sigma 1. It can it can actually almost be those values exactly. That doesn't matter. Um, this is the middle point between sigma 1 and sigma 3. And mathematically, we think about middle points as being averages. So this value, sigma 1 plus sigma 3 divided by 2, comma 0. There's no shear stress associated with that point. Now, notice that that point is not lying on the outside of the circle. It's not on the circumference. And that means that that point doesn't represent a stress combination that the rock is feeling. Okay, so everything, every point along the outside of the circle represents a stress combination, normal stress and shear stress, that the rock is feeling along some plane within the rock. Okay, real quick, also the radius of this circle. I'm going to make a note of that. The radius is going to be the difference between sigma 1 and sigma 3, that distance. 
divided by 2. It's going to be half that. Okay. And for reasons that we'll explore later, the bigger this distance, the more likely it is for rock to fail. Okay, so let's think about this conceptually really quickly. Let's say you have a rock that's being super squeezed, a little cube of rock that's being super squeezed on all sides. Okay, so we're not just pressing down from the top, but we're squeezing in from the sides too. That rock is probably not going to fail, okay, because the, the normal stresses on all the sides of it are all confining and holding that rock together. But if I took that same cube of rock and I, I don't constrain it on its sides, I just let that rock flow out and I smash it from the top, then it's more likely to shatter. And that's not necessarily because of how hard I hit it. It's because I didn't have any support from the sides. So it's actually the difference between those stresses that matters that makes this Mohr circle get really big and really likely to fail. Okay, so let's pick a point on the outside of this circle. This is any, any point that the rock might feel along a certain plane. This point now does have a y value associated with it. So it has an x value and a y value. So it's got some normal stress applied to it and some shear stress. Okay, the normal stress that's applied to it, and we got to this um, equation through the more circle derivation that we did in class or that you can find in, uh, in other aspects of my channel. The normal stress is going to be sigma 1 plus sigma 3 over 2 plus sigma 1 minus sigma 3 over 2 cosine 2 theta. Okay. Now, that might seem really weird and complicated. How the heck did we get there? If you don't have time to watch the more circle derivation video, think about it this way. We know that this value is our average, right? It's right in the middle. And we know that this value is our radius, okay? If I get to add a whole radius to this value, I'm going to end up here. And if I get a negative value out here, then my whole radius subtracted will land me out here. So in a way, this formula and, and cosine 2 theta can range between 1 and negative 1 is a way of saying the normal stress x is somewhere between all the way over here at sigma 1 and all the way over here at sigma 3 and the relationship where we land is dependent on that angle as we rotate around the circle we're going to go from one side to the other so that's where that comes from now what about the y okay so the y is a shear stress and that value is going to be sigma 1 minus sigma 3 over 2 sine 2 theta. Now let's think about for a second why that would be. Okay. Sigma 1 minus sigma 3 over 2 is our radius. Okay. So let's say that we have sine 2 theta varying between negative 1 and 1. That means that my range of y values are going to be my negative radius to my positive radius. And where I land on y is dependent on theta, where I'm rotating around this circle. Okay, So that should help those make a little bit of sense um, logically. Now, where the heck is that theta? Okay, If I draw a line from the center of my circle out to the point um, normal stress comma shear stress, this angle right in here is 2 theta. And that should make sense. That angle in these equations is the angle that determines whether I'm adding or subtracting to my average or my radius of shear or of uh, normal stresses. Okay. So, other things, other ways that we um, might label this diagram. 
Sometimes this is going to be referred to as sigma average, and that should make sense. It's right in the center of the circle. Um, our maximum shear stress is right here, and we're going to call that shear max. The shear max is just going to be the exact same value as our radius because it's one radius above the x-axis. Um, another value that you might need to know is 2 alpha. Okay, so alpha and theta um, are related. Alpha plus theta will add up to 90. 2 alpha plus 2 theta will always add up to 180. But they also have relationships um, in terms of the planes that they represent. Okay, so I'm going to draw a plane. And I'm going to apply a uh, sigma 1 to it. Right? The angle between a normal to the plane, so a line perpendicular to that plane, and sigma 1 is theta. And the uh, complementary angle here can't remember if it's complementary or supplementary, where they add up to 90. But anyway, the other angle here, the angle between sigma 1 and the plane itself, is alpha. So theta is the angle between the normal and sigma 1. Alpha is the angle between the plane itself and sigma 1. Okay. One thing that you might notice is that we've paid a lot of attention to the positive half of this circle. And we do that in, um, in structural geology because as a baseline, we think about rocks as mostly being um, in compression when they're below the surface of the earth, so mostly being squeezed. And geologists think of compression or squeezing as positive. So we have positive x values and positive y values um, squeezing that rock. Okay, so what are some conventions that might be associated with in physical space uh, that correlate to those parts of the Mohr circle? Okay, let's uh, take this little element, this little piece of rock, we're going to apply a compressive normal um, stress in Y, compressive normal stress in X, and this little element does not need to be straight up and down. Okay, so this this could be a little block of rock that we care about that's um, not oriented normally to the surface. So just for example, let's say you are drilling and you really want to drill down um, into a reservoir that's over here. Let's give ourselves a little fold. Okay, so we want to get into this joker. We might need to come down and curve. And so when we want to think about the stresses on the side of that borehole, a little rock on the side of that borehole, boop, that little block of rock is not oriented normally with respect to the surface of Earth. It's at a little tilt. So there's going to be an angle involved in that rotation. And because it's at an angle, this little block of rock is also going to experience a shear stress. Okay? Let's just think about it like this. If you had a stress from the surface pushing down, like gravity, and then um, the lithostatic stress of all the rock on top of that, rho GH, pushing down on top of that circle, surface, this top surface of rock, it's going to hit that surface and kind of slide, right? Or if, if there were nothing here, we would hit the surface and slide down. So there's a shear involved. So we know that we're, we're not at sigma 1 or sigma 3 when we're kind of rotated like this we're at some angle 
to those principal stresses. So I'm going to draw some shear stresses on the side of this element. And tau xy, shear yx. So this spans um, perpendicular to the y-axis in the direction of x, perpendicular to the x-axis in direction of y. OK, so these are normal stresses. These are shear stresses. Um, and this little guy exists somewhere at an angle in space. So if you have um, this scenario, sometimes you might be given these points as sigma x tau. I'm not sure if that's a tau. I think it's a tau. Tau um, xy, we'll say shear just for convenience. Actually, that's a negative because it's going in the negative direction. This one up here would be the positive because it's going in the positive direction. Same thing over here. If you drew that in, it's going to be a negative version of that one. Okay, so there's going to be four pieces here, kind of four points in space. And we can take those four points in space and plot them on our Moore diagram. Okay, so doop, 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 doop. Also, I'm not a wizard. Um, the way <laughs> the way that I came by this, uh, I drew the circle first, which admittedly I should not have done. Um, I plotted two points, kind of mirror images of each other, on the uh, across the x-axis, and I did the same thing on the on the y. And the re or on the right side of the circle. And the reason why I did that is because um, I know that I have two kind of versions of the same point, one with a positive x value and one um, with a positive y value. Or po sorry, one with a positive y value and one with a negative y value. And so I know that they pot, uh, plot opposite each other. Uh, so the cool thing is what that gives me the ability to do. I have these four points. I can define a circle, and then I can um, plot my outside on that. And so by doing that, um, I also have the ability to figure out the actual angle that this thing is rotated um, in space with. So I can find the center of my circle, and from that, I can get two theta. We're going to talk about how to do that in class. And just as a reminder, this y-axis is my shear axis, and this x-axis is my normal stress um, axis. Cool. All right. Thank you for uh, watching this video, going over parts of a Moore circle.